been doing this research for about 12 years now, uh, very intensively. It's a very subjective research. It's an inner work to a big extent. And usually it started with the Matrimandi and the steps come as somehow I have been progressing and with people and through different interest fields. So now I'm working with, with Lavanir and so this whole, the city comes into the focus. So this is not a finalized research, it's a research in process and the last parts of it are actually very new for myself also. And um, so when we look at it here, we have these three expressions. Oroville, a city with the soul, the city the earth needs, and the cradle of the superman. The cradle of the superman that refers to this new consciousness, which Sheryl Lindo uh, brought down and mother, and which is about actually a next step in evolution. And they saw Oroville as the, the cradle for this. So we can take the next one. This is the initial drawing that mother made for Roche and gave to him. So you have the four zones of the city here already. You have the center. Okay, we can take the next one. The same as you saw before. So here you see, you have the, the Matri Mandir at the center with the oval island. And you can see the paths that come out. You see the petals, the Matri Mandir the petals. Here you have the, the Garden of Unity with the Banyan tree. Here you have the, the amphitheater, which I, in this context, call the place of unity and diversity. And we have the uh, Garden of the Unexpected here. Okay. Here we have, coming basically on the western side, the international zone. Now, I will just... Next slide. So, just to, to kind of see where is this research centered from. It's centered from the Matrimandia. This is... Uh, uh, we look at the bottom drawing here. And you have basically in the Matri Mandir, you have the five pillars of the Matri Mandir. And Mother gave them the names of the four aspects of the Mother. Mahakali to the north, Mahalakshmi to the east, and Maheshwari south, and Mahasaraswati to the west. So this is when we work with the Mother symbol called the Lotus Mandala, which has the, the center, which is the oneness. Okay? It has the four aspects, the four petals of the Divine Mother, four main aspects. And then it has 12 qualities or powers of the Mother, which we actually have in the meditation petals. So this is, is all coming here in, in the Matri Mandir. Can we take the next one? So here you have the 12 petals that you have in the Matri Mandir. Uh, in 19, Mother already talks in 1912 with the group in France about this 12, the number 12. Okay. In 1927, Sri Aurobindo has published the book, The Mother, which is being published. And uh, Mother and Sri Aurobindo has some conversation or conversations where Sri Aurobindo gives the colors, the colors of the rainbow to, to these uh, uh, petals. And uh, the Mother gives these names these qualities, these powers of, of descending into the manifestation of the Divine Mother. So can we take the next one? Yes. So this symbol I have been working with over the years very, very, very extensively. We have used it for research in economy, research in, in how to create selection processes. We work very widely with people to create bridges between the organizations where we got into fights in the past with society, ashram, Oroville, Delhi ashram, and people from all over India. And we have had a lot of very, very fruitful results from this. Recently, since working, now go back, Lavanir, I had an experience, these things always comes as a kind of insight. It's not something which you sit and figure out. No, afterwards you use the mind to look at it, but when it happens, it kind of comes as a revelation. So suddenly I was looking at seeing the symbol and not seeing the petals, but seeing the structure which is there. And it's very interesting because if you see it like that, you basically have, it's like wheels that drive. And this comes back to the spinning of the galaxy later. So first you have the center, which if I go back to, to Sherwin's book, The Mother, is when he says uh, that 
in the descent, in the manifestation of the Divine Mother, you have the Ishvara Shakti, which is one, and it goes into the Purusha Prakriti, which is moving into two. So basically for me, this is the chamber in the Matrimandir, where you have the oneness, but it is also descending into the realization. You are talking about Matrimandir being the hub. So this is where this is coming from, no? Then, here you have basically four spokes, and these spokes sit on each petal each. Now, which are these four petals that these spokes are sitting on? So, it's the petals of goodness, uh, peace, gratitude, and, and uh, receptivity. So, I can't say what this is, but obviously these are the first driving forces, this first in manifestation, goodness, peace, gratitude, and receptivity. We have to look, one really has to do an inward work on this to see what does this, how does it apply, what does it mean, why are these four actually driving. Then we see that we have the twelve coming, and those spokes, all the twelve, they are in between the petals, so they are not belonging to a specific power in the same sense as the petals themselves are, but they continue through the Matrimandir Oval Island. They go between the uh, gardens, they go up to the edge, all of these paths no? and pathways. So, can we go to the next one? Yes, so here you see the image of the, of the Matrimandir in the island. You have here the 12 qualities. You see how those petals continue out. It's also interesting to note that the mother said in 1971, when these qualities were given for the matrimandir, for the meditation petals, she said something that she had not at all mentioned earlier. She said, the first eight are for our attitudes towards the divine. The last four our attitude towards humanity. And the four first eight, they basically go from here with sincerity, humility, gratitude, perseverance, aspiration, receptivity, progress, and courage. And you see how they, they are contained like this with the gardens. And basically you have there the industrial zone, the cultural zone, and the residential zone. It's our life in this city. We have come here, consecrated to the yoga, to this realization of this new consciousness, and it is a work in life. It's not a yoga which withdraws from life, it is in life. So you can see here that those eight, which we see as relating to our integrity and our inner development, they are actually related to our life in the city. The last four, which are towards humanity, they go westwards, where you have the Garden of Unity, Amphitheater Unity and Diversity, the Garden of the Unexpected, and the International Zone. This is the space of interaction with the world, the interaction with each other, in that sense. It's all kind of seeing the symbolism behind it, because this speaks about what the city really is for, and why it is so important with all these details, which might see, seem very you know, why it's so important how a, a road is lined and how it comes at the curb and like that. Why is all this so important? Because it is important because these aspects of the Divine Mother, Mahasaraswati is perfection. It's order, organization, perfection. Mahalakshmi is beauty, harmony. Maheshwari, wisdom and wideness. Mahakali, strength, truth, truth consciousness, and Sri Aurobindo Mother says she's the most loving aspect of the mother. So all this is what is building the city truly and really. This is what has to manifest with this new consciousness. So uh, we can take the next one. So now I just want to take you on a little journey with this to see how this has developed. Because when Roche first is asked by Mother to take this up, work up, he comes back with basically two proposals. 
One is a rectangular city. I have not brought that picture into the And the second one is this, what is called the nebula. And she immediately simply discards the rectangular item. She says, no, not this. And she goes on, gives, this, is, this is where to work. Now, Roger doesn't take this one and go home and start to create the DDP and all this for this one. It is a journey, if I have understood it right, over about three years, where he interacts with her and he goes through, this goes through a development. So it's a very conscious guidance. And that guidance which she has with him, that is why so many of us say that this is so important what Roger has done, because she also says he's a very receptive instrument. There is, concerning for all of us here, there is later, uh, uh, somewhere in the, must be 70s also, when all of it is happening, Mother tells how she is sitting working and something comes to her. But she's busy with something else. So it kind of, it, it says, it insisted. So then, okay, okay, she wrote it down. And then she said, it said we. So she asked to this, <laughs> what was coming, why we? And it answered her, because the Orovillians will be able to collaborate. So when we are doing this work of building this city, we are actually collaborating with the divine. It's something very mystical, very beautiful, and it's a huge grace in life to have this opportunity for all of us who are here and for all of us who are allowed to participate in building this. No? So here you see the, and it is also interesting because you will see that this model, which comes first, can we take the next one? Here you see already the four zones, the way we have them now, with the concentration. You see how the international zone, the cultural zone, there is an openness. I don't know if there are already these names on the zones. You have the larger density of the residential zone and also the density on the industrial zone. It moves from the center and out, like this. Like there is an explosion, nebula, whatever, and it moves like this. This is still kept on the Martimanio Island. This is not one model after the other. This is for the, I would say, the artist, the creator. It's a force which is pushing. And as we are growing, we are seeing more and more. In the Orville uh, um, judgment, which gave us the Orville Foundation, etc., okay, uh, when the, I don't remember what you call it, but when at the end of the case, the lawyers give their speech delivery sort of, and then the judgment will come, uh, the fight was kind of with seeing Orville as a religion, Mother Shabinda's religion, which would allow that one organization to continue to hold the land, or whether it was not a religion, which Mother Shabinda had always said, for God's sake, don't make it into a religion. Okay. And in that last, the other lawyer has spoken extremely well. So actually, the way I heard the story, the Oregon lawyer didn't know how to counter it. It was so well put. So he asked Kirit Pai, that was our chairman. What do I say? And Kirit Pai said, I also don't know. So in the night, Kirit Pai had a visionary dream, which was a scroll, and on it something was written. So in the morning, he wrote this down. He gave it to the lawyer. And that was what set Orville into its next movement. I don't have it word perfect, but basically what it said was that uh, philosophy, religion, and yoga all have the same aim, union with the divine. Philosophy does it, I, and they use the word I always forget now, but it is this, you know, how we dissect and how we look like that. Religion does it through creed, dogma, and ritual. No? And yoga does it by a change of consciousness through a change of consciousness. So I'm saying this because this applies to the growth and the development of the city. Mother said the matrimony is so important, first thing to come in place for us. It is true that when you walk in through the gate, I often go there in the afternoon because I need a peace in all this turmoil we are in presently, 
when you walk through the gate and you walk inside, it goes quiet. There is actually such a solid peace and presence. So, this has to also, we have to be receptive to receive it wherever we are, that's our work, but also the crown coming in place is extremely instrumental in this because it will put the city in place. It's very, very important. It's very crucial. And, and now I'm kind of going too fast in places, but I will still say it now. Alok Pandey uh, is an ashramite. He's a very good speaker. He gives talks. You can find many of his talks on, on YouTube, etc. And I don't listen much to lectures, but I suddenly saw he had put up a talk which said, Oroville is a yantra. The city is a yantra. So that made me very curious because the way I'm looking at it. So I just sat down and I listened to it. There he says that basically the crown is the Sudarshan chakra of Sri Krishna. So this was very interesting. So of course I was thinking about it. The next morning I was going to Pondicherry because I go once a week to sit with an older ashramite and we read from Sherbun's book, Secret of the Veda. And in what he was reading, we read and the reading he reads and it's like a meditation. So it's a very inward situation, no? not thinking and debating and all that. No? So then he reads in these uh, lines, I think it's the fifth or sixth hymn to Agni, he reads the name Tvashtri. So there is a footnote which will be to explain something. And Tvashtri is another name for Vishvakarma, the divine engineer and architect. So Richard does something he usually doesn't do. He actually takes a Sanskrit lexicon. He says, I need to know more. So he takes the Sanskrit lexicon. He looks it up. I'm sitting in meditation while this is happening. And he reads that Tvashtri or Vishvakarma has two children, a son and a daughter. The daughter is married to the sun god, is going to get married to the sun god. Now you have to understand that the sun and the sun god for us represents the supramental. When you read Savitra, etc., you will see this is the link there. So I am <laughs> listening. And then he says that she cannot approach the sun god, the light is too strong. So Vishvakarma takes the shield of the sun, he puts it on his leg and he cuts off the rim. Now she can approach. As I'm listening to it, I feel like I'm that daughter and I can approach the sun because that, with that, what he has cut off, he creates the Sudarshan Chakra for Vishnu, he creates the Trishul for Shiva and he creates the weapons for the other gods. So literally, my sense is like that actually that Sudarshan sh Chakra is our crown. It is a transformative power in our work and it lets us approach this consciousness. That change of, change of consciousness, true change of consciousness, this is part of it. So for the first time, I'm moving out of the Oval Island and into the city. So, so this we can go. So, this take the next one. Here you now see that this force is moving. It's no longer a radiation from an explosion from a center. There is actually a movement of two forces. And then Anupama was talking about the international zone and the uh, cultural zone. You see this kind of balance that you have. It's quiet space. It's a, when I see it, I can't help but think of the the scales of justice, somehow, you know, equality, something. And here you have these energy movements. So, so yeah, we can take the next one. Okay, so I have a few here. You know, we have so many drawings, so I've just taken a few to, to, to show you. Can we take the next one? You see, especially around this, it's called the um, macro structure. There is a lot of development, there are a lot of drawings, they really go into it, they have kind of found something, but they keep on, they still don't go into DDPs and details at all. Next one. This is interesting because we are just now looking at the lakes. I'm just saying this to my colleagues. 
that actually in this one, though everywhere in other drawings, the um, uh, radials come from the crown, basically. But here you actually see four movements, which comes all the way from the lake. So for the bridges, we can look at these things. I want to just to bring that to your awareness, that, that, that we are not necessarily confined to one bridge. There are actually four movements, and these movements come from each of the four aspects of the mother. So they basically come all the way from the center, from these four central spokes. Okay, next one. So here now we see the galaxy taking shape. The lightness of those two parts, the, the residential area, the industrial area. Next one, you see again, it's coming more and more clear. And it's a lot, you see it's so artistic, there is so much play with it. Next one. And here you have basically the galaxy as we are working with it today, the model with the zones. And, and uh, what I found, I said that in the center area, you actually have still the, the, the um, nebula. You have that radiation like that. In the radius and the lines of force, we still have the, the uh, uh, max, maxi, no, macrostructure, macrostructure. So all these parts are still here. The 12 radials don't come out one from each one. There is something which moves with force and it moves from the crown. So I, this research will, I think, go on for the next thousand years. There are layers and layers and layers. But I wanted to, and I was encouraged also to share this with you. You can take the next one. This should be the last one. So here is what we are working with today. And I wanted to point out in this context, because I find it very, very interesting. We have the crown here. Anupama was pointing out it was a bit difficult because the colors were not following. But basically, inside this whole piece area, we have here, the, this part here, that is the, the organizational, the governance. The governance is often something we see as very gray and dull. Here, Mother Rocher has placed the governance closest to the soul. It is very, very important. It's also important not only for the future, but for us to understand that governance has to be very much ruled by these qualities. It's not a, 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 a matter of I decide, you decide. There is something, also for Oroville, Mother talks about two things in governance. She talks about a, a spiritual hierarchy and she talks about the divine anarchy. And my conclusion is that it, they always have to give birth to each other. They are in constant play. It's not one or the other. They continuously give birth to each other. The, the hierarchy which actually uses what is the best and the most advanced and the play with everybody being participating you now. Then we have education. These are the main schools and education for our youth. On the back side, uh, or not the north side here, uh, inside the crown, we have the vocational training. The place where actually the builders, the, the, the workers, the maintenance people are being educated. Okay? So this, all the concerns of the youth and the growing population is actually close, as close as possible to the crown. This is very important. We also have, as Anupama said, a part of the international zone starts there also. So I think that this is, this is very important. We have zero there. Why are these things placed there? Because they are close, close to the matrimandir. But the city has to be built. It can't be matrimandir in isolation. That energy has to move through. And what the galaxy does is that when the spiral arms move, it means actually everything is a hologram. So there is not one, you cannot have courage if you don't have sincerity and goodness and all this. It's not complete. No quality is complete with the other ones contained and inside it. And we need to develop in ourselves the flow of all these things. So the galaxy, that is what the nebula is missing. It just goes out. 
hit and miss where you happen to be. But in this place, it will all, all come to every place and, and create a very integral situation. So that was, I think. Thank you very much.